picture it. Eastern Central Florida, 2001. A young millennial girl moves to Cocoa, Florida with her family. They go to Disney. They stay at home, watch movies and TV shows. They neglect the beach that is only about 30 minutes away from where they live. She goes to school. She makes some friends. She learns to love. That family was my family. And that young millennial girl, well, that was me. Hello everyone, welcome and welcome back. We are here on the east coast of Florida in the Cocoa, Merritt Island, Cocoa Beach sort of area. Um, this is where I grew up. <laughs> I grew up here. <laughs> I spent 14 years, about 14 years of my life living in this part of Florida. Um, so, I probably out of everywhere that I have lived before, this is the longest. This is the longest stretch of time that I've ever lived in one spot. Uh, so I'm going to be showing all of you that today. Um, I'm going to be showing you where I used to live. I'm going to be showing you the schools that I went to, uh, some places that I used to work, and just basically sharing all of the stories that I can think of, at least for the time being. There's a lot uh, that I could show and I'll, we'll be back. We'll do more things in this area as well, but I figured I'd give some of the bare bones of well, hey, this is where I lived. Um, if you caught my first video of this series that I'm now doing of where I used to live, that was when I worked at Disney, which was later on in my life when I was more of an adult. And um, that was a hard, <laughs> that was a really hard one <laughs> to do. Um, first of all, thank you all so much for watching it. Thank you so much for the support on that video. It was a hard one to do and a hard one to talk about because a lot of it did have to deal with trauma and a very um, difficult time in my life. I'm so excited and so happy that this particular video and the things that I'm showing you today is not like that basically at all except for the basic, you know, things that we all deal with when we go to high school and middle school and stuff like that. When we relive our childhood uh, locations. Um, my memories here are really nice and very pleasant and, and happy. Um, so I'm so excited to share this with you. Such a, a really honestly great part of my life. I can very happily and proudly stand here before you today and say that I had a really amazing childhood. Um, and that's, you know, obviously all thanks to uh, my mom and, uh, and my dad, my stepdad, uh, my family and um, the choices that they made and, and all of that stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm just, I'm excited. I'm happy to be able to share this with you today. This is one that I've really, really been looking forward to. And um, anyway, we got a lot of ground to cover, got a lot of stories to share. So without further ado, let's get going and let's go. So we're actually starting this video in Merritt Island, Florida, which is right between Cocoa Beach, Florida and Cocoa. Florida. We spent a lot of time here in Merritt Island. There's all kinds of amenities, restaurants, things like that over here that the small little town of Coco just doesn't have. And this is one of this is one of those things. This is the target. This is the closest target to where I lived in Coco. And it's also the very first place that I ever held a job. Worked at Target for a hot minute there. Uh, maybe about six months or so. I was a seasonal worker. Uh, so I wasn't here too terribly often. It wasn't a full-time job or anything like that. This was when I was in college, if I'm not mistaken this. I think this was between high school and college and also a little bit of freshman year of, of college for me that I worked at this Target. I was a merchandise person, so basically what I did was um, I made... I made the store looked good. I moved stuff around on the shelves to make it to make it look good. Let's just say I wasn't the most responsible person either. I remember this is when I started getting into energy drinks. Yeah, I was here at Target and uh, that 
didn't help either. Oh, and look at that. I don't know if you can tell or not, but the sign there says that they're hiring at the Target. I'm going to go ahead and pass on that. I'm not sure that I left with the best track record anyway. I don't know if they'd want to hire me, even though that was an exceedingly long time ago. But, uh... Yeah, by the way, this is, uh, this is not the very first job that I ever had. My very, very, very first job was when I was 16 years old and I worked at Disney. I was seasonal at Disney and I did retail over at Mouse Gear. That was my very first job ever. Uh, so this one, I believe, was my second job. And we're not going to go inside because a Target is a Target. <laughs> and they all, like, more or less look the same. And I don't think there's anything that I could really point out that would be of interest at all. Especially because I don't remember, like, a ton from when I worked here. So there, there are more valuable things that we can do with our time uh, than me just sitting here talking about Target. We do that enough, especially during, during the spooky season. So uh, we're going to move on. We're actually going to move out of Merritt Island now, and we're going to head back into Coco, the actual town of Coco, where I lived and I grew up. And just a few short miles down the bee line, we have made it to the tiny little town of Coco, Florida. Not Coco Beach, folks. Not Coco Beach. Coco. Florida. I'm going to show you a couple of places in this uh, little plaza here. Uh, there's a McDonald's all the way down that way that we frequented a lot. And then here, where all of this construction is, it looks like they're building like apartments or something like that. That <laughs> This was in here like literally just a few months ago. Uh, when we were here the last time uh, was about January or February of 2022. And uh, this was a Winn-Dixie. There was a Winn-Dixie here in like a plaza and a few other shops. So they are building apartments for Lord knows who. I mean, I was like shouting at Jay as we were driving in here earlier, like who's living here? Who is living here? There's also a CVS right next door to where we are too, which I frequented quite a lot. It was one of the closest stores to where we lived. And then speaking of grocery store, literally right across the street from us is the Publix. Actually, that, that whole complex back in there is called Coco Commons. So there's a Publix back in there and um, there's a Beefo Brady's, which we went to all the time. Beefo Brady's is like a, like a sports pub restaurant sort of thing. Uh, there used to be a, um, a Blockbuster in that complex as well that I would uh, rent movies from from time to time and a subway used to be in there it doesn't look like it's in there anymore either so like I was saying at the beginning of this video my family and I moved to Coco in about 2001 if I'm not mistaken <laughs> I'm pretty sure it was 2001 <laughs> And um, at the time, I was in the middle of uh, sixth grade. I was in the sixth, no, fifth grade, sixth grade, sixth grade at the time. And um, so that's how young I was. And um, we, yeah, we lived here for about 14 years. We moved here to Coco from Melbourne, Florida, which is where we lived for a short amount of time. Uh, after we moved from Kissimmee, Florida. So trying to build the timeline here for you all. It's very, very confusing. We spent a lot of time in this area in particular, um, kind of on the outskirts of, of the town of Coco, more or less. Um, because like I said, the, the Publix right across the street there, that's the closest grocery store that we would have had. The CVS is kind of the closest like little store if you needed like little things um would be right over here uh there was also there used to be a Win dixie right over there that was another store that we could have gone to and then the mcdonald's back behind me here we went to all the dang time we ate there quite a lot uh again we're talking when i was like in middle school high school stuff like that so uh, I remember going to that McDonald's a lot, you know, before band practices and concerts and, 
you know, all kinds of stuff just to, when you gotta get like a, cri a quick meal uh, before you go on to your, to your next thing. So yeah, I ate at that, ate at that McDonald's a lot, a whole lot. Also the subway that used to be across the street at the Publix as well, I ate at that sub. That's pretty much the only time I've ever eaten at Subway um, was at the subway across the street. Um, that was right next to a blockbuster where, yeah, I rented, uh, rented a few movies in there too. And there it is, the McDonald's, just down the, down the street from here. It's definitely gone through some renovations. It looks, it looks really, it looks really nice on the outside. All right, we're going to do a drive-by of the complex across the street now. There's the Beef O'Brady's that we went to all the time. And now here's the... Publix that I really for some reason don't remember it could be because they all like seriously look the same like how different can a Publix really be and then in here used to be where the blockbuster was I can't remember which store exactly and then one of these was also I think that was the subway one of those was the subway I don't remember which one so there you go, yippee. And over here, you're gonna see the number one tourist or destination in general for over us here over in Coco. And that's the good old Walmart. That's how you know you're in a small town is when the Walmart's the big entertainment thing. Also, Taco Bell. Spent a lot of time at that Taco Bell. Also that Little Caesars and the GameStop over there as well. Again, we're talking my high school years here, so that's like the thing, right? Taco Bell and game stuff. And we'll go ahead and start from the top and work our way backwards. How about that? We are at the Eastern Florida State College, AKA the BCC, Brevard Community College. Back in my day, that's what it used to, used to be called was the BCC. Now it's Eastern Florida State College. And holy moly, driving up here, the anxiety I felt, oh, my gosh. Over here is the Performing Arts Center, which I have been inside of, oh, so many times. Not just uh, going here, like going to this community college, but also in high school and middle school as well, because we did performances here. We did concerts here. Um, and be, this, this, you will see, like all of, all of the schools that I went to are very, very close together. My high school is right down the street right down the road from where this community college is. So we often shared campuses and uh, did a lot of our concerts here too. And it's quite weird to see it so empty. The whole, like these huge massive parking lots, it's all empty. Now it's Memorial Day weekend. We're in between, you know, spring classes and fall class and summer classes, truly. Um, so it makes sense, but it's so weird, especially because a lot of the anxiety that I feel being back here is because of the parking, <laughs> trying to find parking here <laughs> and like going to class and being late for class and like you can't find parking and it's really, really hot out. So you're like parking out in like BF central and, uh, you are like running to class and now you're all hot and sweat. I the anxiety that school gives you, I just, I can't. When I was in high school, uh, I actually did, um, I did dual enrollment. No, actually I did early admissions. That's what I did. Um, so when I was a senior in high school, I actually didn't take any uh, high school classes. I took all college classes when I was, when I was a senior. Not to flex or whatever, but you know. Um, so my senior year of high school, I spent here on this campus taking college courses. It's probably very hard to tell, but the parking lot goes on and on and on. And this is just one section of the community college. I don't know really how other community colleges are, but this one is expansive. It is, it's a very large campus. Another fun fact is that I learned to drive in this parking lot in this whole area, which makes, makes a lot of sense as I'm driving around here. It's like totally empty. It's a great place to learn the basics of how to drive a car. A lot of my classes took place in these buildings behind me here business center building here. No, I did not take business classes, but 
I took like a psycho I took a couple psychology classes here. I took a communications course, a government course, uh, chemistry. I took a I took a number of very basic things. I took an art class here. That was a lot of fun. Um, just a bunch of different things, especially when I was doing early admissions. You're kind of supposed to do like the basic stuff. So when you get to your actual college, you get to do like the meat of whatever, um, you know, degree that you have. Um, so I, I did, you know, math and, and thing, science, things like that here that had really nothing to do with, with my actual college degree, but just like those basic course credits that you got to get out of the way. Um, so yeah, I, I tried to park in this parking lot here a lot of the time. Usually it was uh, in the parking lot of right in front of me here and, and um, I'll show you in a second, but uh, yeah, this is it. Rar Community College. Yay. Here's another look at the buildings here without my fat face in front of you, the Fine Arts Center. Just right down that way, the bookstore across the, right behind that building there, the business center building. Good times. And then yeah, there's like a kind of an overflow parking in here. That's often where I had to, had to park. And remember the anxiety of like trying to find your classes, but you can never find your classes like on the first day, you know what I mean? Oh my gosh, I still have bad dreams about school. All right, doing a drive-by of my high school, Coco High School. I don't think we'll be able to get inside like where the parking lot is because it's all gated off, but we'll do a drive-by here. Coco High School spent more or less three years of my life here. Wow, it's double gated. How about that? Yeah, no trespassing inside of there that's for darn sure had a lot of my spanish class was inside of that building that we're looking at right now that i got kicked out of when when i was in when i was a senior because i was early admissions and they were like why are you taking college classes or high school classes when you're supposed to be in community college and i was like i don't know you tell me anyway then i had to finish the rest of the semester uh online for spanish which was a joke but anyway there we go that's my high school coco high school and also worth noting that this uh, little parking lot that we're in right now is where we used to do band practices and that's a that's a band podium right there where the uh um oh gosh yeah i've been out of band in a, for a long time where the conductor would stand up there and conduct us as we did our uh, marching band practices yeah this parking lot here we would do band practice, marching band practice. I don't know, I, Lord only knows what they do now. I have no idea. That band podium looks like it hasn't been used in a long time. It's definitely seen better days. But yeah, this is, this is where we used to do our practices. Oh my gosh. So many hours, so many hours on this pavement. I'll go ahead and say this now. If you enjoyed high school or middle school, you are psychotic. I'm only half joking because seriously, who enjoyed high school? Who enjoyed middle school? I don't have good memories from, from either. I really don't. Like I do have some, obviously, but for the most part, this was hell on earth for me. School was hell on earth for me. When I was in school, I did not have a lot of friends. I was very shy. I was I wouldn't say I was shy. It's not that I it's not that I feared other people. It's that I had no interest in other people. I didn't have interest in making friends. I didn't really know how to. I didn't know how people just came up against other people and were like, "Hey, you want to be friends?" I don't know. Like I don't I didn't understand how any of that worked. And it never worked for me. Um, I always just kind of waited for people to befriend me. And let me tell you, that doesn't work. <laughs> that doesn't work. Nobody befriends the quiet band geek. Um, so I don't know. I, I didn't have a lot of friends. I had a lot of, um, I wasn't ever bullied. I'm very lucky that I was never bullied in school. Thank goodness. 
you have to be noticed to be bullied in school. Like people have to take notice of you and no one took notice of me. That's why I think, um, I just, I kept to myself. I was very quiet. I went to school, I did my work, I got out and that was it. I didn't fraternize with other people. It was just, I was strictly there just to go to school and try to get through it and move on with my day. Um, you know, it was, it was one of those things where it's like, oh my God, who am I going to sit with at lunch today? Um, oftentimes I would take my lunch in the band room if I could. Um, it was, it just, you know, who am I going to sit next to on the school bus? Like who, please God, like have the teacher do, um, assigned groups for projects instead of us picking partners for things because that was like who do I pick I don't have any friends um so that was very difficult on me I don't know how I survived that at the time I guess because we just always have to like <laughs> make do with what we have I guess like I didn't really have a choice <laughs> what choice did I have and I know that like people like the popular kids and whatnot like obviously we all think that they probably had the best time at school, but everybody has their issues. It's adolescence. Like, it, there's always something going wrong, whether it's actually going wrong or not. So, it is what it is. It's high school. What can you say? It's parked on the side of the road, because as you can see, it is gated. But here's the, here's the sign. Coco High School, home of the Tigers. That was our mascot, was the Tigers. And on football days on Fridays, they would always play Eye of the Tiger, which was our school theme song uh, in between every period, every class. So now every time I hear Eye of the Tiger, I get PTSD, which is fun. And Tampa J can attest to that. Uh, it like, oh, oh my gosh, where am I? Am I back in high school? Where am I? Every time I hear Eye of the Tiger. And across the street from the school is the stadium, which they built while I was here in high school. 2004, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, big, huge stadium right across the street from the school where we played football. And something that was definitely not around when I was here is this auditorium, which is brand spanking new. And by new, I mean, I have no idea when it was built. But we sure as crap did not have an auditorium when I was here. That would have been pretty cool. Yeah, we used the, the BCC, the, the place that I showed you right before this, for our concert. So it's, it's really nice that they have their own place now. Yeah, Coco High parked in that parking lot, walked up the, walked up the hill there over to the band room. That's where I started all of my mornings, hanging out in the band room with the rest of my friends my band geek friends, and then uh, begin the day of hell in high school. Obviously at this point you may be able to tell that I played music in high school. I'm just kind of talking about it as if it's a fact, and I'm not even sure if I've ever brought it up on the channel before, <laughs> so a lot of you probably have no idea what I'm talking about. So I will just spell out my music career here for you right here and now. Music was my life. It was my everything. It was everything that I did, all of my free time, all of my work time was totally devoted to music. Um, so when I was in the fifth grade, uh, I got introduced to string in instruments, to the violin, and I learned how to play the violin. And actually, pause on that because before that, my mom is a musician as well, so she always instilled in us, um, you know, knowledge of music and uh and wanted us to be to be musical to do musical things um so I, it started from from a very very early age i actually come from a family of musicians like a lot of us in my family are musicians so it's just it's just a thing it's it's what we do um but anyway i, I first really started getting into it when i was in the fifth grade and i learned how to play the violin um, and then when I got into middle school is when I started learning percussion instruments, uh, the drums, but you know, keyboards and timpani and, you know, snare drum and the drum set, marimba, xylophone, bells, tambourine, triangle. Percussion is a huge, huge thing in and of itself. It's not just one instrument. It's all of the instruments. I took private lessons. 
Um, I was incredibly serious about it. And when I was in high school, I did marching band as well. And I did orchestra too. I kept up with the violin um, for some of my time here too. Um, and yeah, I played uh, in marching band. I was the pit captain, the front ensemble, all the people up at the front. If you've ever seen marching band that are like playing the xylophones and like doing all of that stuff. Um, I did that my freshman year. My sophomore year, I did bass drum. And then my junior year, I played the snare drum um, in marching band. And uh, I carried that all throughout college um, as well, through some of college, I should say. I was very serious about percussion in particular. So um, if I didn't have music, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea what my life would have been like here. Uh, because that filled all of the voids for me. Uh, like I said, music was my hobby. It was, I put everything into it. I practiced all the time. Um, all of my free time was spent inside of that room right over here, the band room. And yeah, I just, I spent so much time here. Music was everything to me, especially this time in my life, in high school in particular. It was everything. Um, so this is a huge, this is huge. This is a big darn deal to be able to share this with you all. Such a big part of my life. Um, you know, as we grow older, sometimes I think we forget <laughs> what we used to be like, what our lives used to be. Um, so it's, it's interesting to think of how much I've grown now since high school, how much of a different person I am, how different my priorities are, um, compared to then, and then to be able in turn to share that with you all too. And you all only basically know me as Chris the girl when I've had an entire life prior to YouTube. So it's so cool to be able to share this with you all. Um, I'm so honored that you all even want to watch it in the first place. Like I really, really appreciate it. Um, such a cool moment for me to be back here at high school when I just felt when I was just, I was, I kind of just felt like nothing. Like I wasn't like anything. Nobody looked my direction. Nobody really cared what I thought about, you know, at least that's what it felt like to me. Um, and now I have a YouTube channel and I think that's really cool. So anyway, high school, yippee. Just ran over to take some pictures in front of the stadium wall here. Didn't bring my actual camera, but just wanted to point out the stadium seating up there. Oh, wow. Spent a lot of time in those stadiums playing the drums. Coco Tigers. Games were fun. That, that was a lot of fun. Being in the marching band and, and going to games and stuff like that. It was really cool. So just showing you the road here too. So that's where we came down from. BCC is literally just right over there. And then in there, that's the, the band room area. The whole building back there. And then yeah, the new, the new auditorium. All right, well, goodbye high school. Goodbye and good riddance. And our next stop leads us to my middle school, Clear Lake Middle School, which has definitely seen much, much better days. Yeah, there's not much really to say here except this is where I went to middle school, so this would have been 2002 and 2003. Yeah, this is literally right down the road again from where my high school is and where the community college is as well. It's all in this tight a uh, little area. Personally think that middle school was a little bit more not fun than high school for me. I think it's such a huge transition from elementary school. Um, you know, the, the PE, we had lockers. You had to change in the lockers for PE, for gym. I remember that being like a whole like, oh my gosh. And I've never had a locker before, wow. Um, and then just the concept of going to different classrooms for each period and, um, you know, trying to navigate the school. It wasn't just one classroom for one, for your entire day. It was multiple classrooms and your schedule changed all the time. Um, you know, you had more options for lunch and it's just such a huge transition from elementary school. And I, I just remember that being hard really really hard for me um 
just all like I don't know <laughs> middle school I, I just don't think that that was very fun for me it was it was just I mean is it fun for anybody I mean seriously but at least I can look back on high school and I have like decent memories but here it's like oh like I remember gym and just hating gym and PE and and having to figure out all my classes and like kids weren't as nice here I actually took Jay here and to my high school as well um on a different trip I didn't film it or anything but he's he's already seen this before he knows what all this looks like and he was shocked that my schools were not inside especially in a state like Florida where it rains and it's hot like why would it not all be inside but for some stupid reason all of it's it's all outside you had to walk outside between classes and that really really sucked as well i that that was not fun yeah i don't know i could i could i could tell you all kinds of stories about my time here in high school um or not high school. Well, high school too, but middle school. Um, I don't know. I, we'd be here for hours and hours and hours if I did. I guess one thing that I will say uh, about middle school is that, you know how everybody, this is going to sound weird at first, but you know how everybody's like, well, you always, everybody knows exactly where they were when 9-11 happened. <laughs> like everybody says that, right? Well, I know exactly where I was when 9-11 happened, and it was here in middle school. I was in middle school, and one of the classes right up top, right right over there, actually, um, that's where I was when 9-11 happened. So I think about that, too, a lot, actually, um, in regards to, to middle school. Also, band and orchestra was a huge deal for me um, in middle school, too, especially orchestra, more so orchestra and the violin. Um, I spent as much time as I could inside of that band room, as much time as I could. I always asked my teachers if I could go to the band room and practice. And um, I kind of had that name for myself when I, when I came in here. Um, and teachers let me do it. They, they let me really focus on music. This is also when I got into... Um, all county and all state honors for violin as well um and and all of the teachers knew it and uh so i was i was like i was that kid like i was that nerdy nerdy band orchestra kid that that took her craft seriously <laughs> i was that was the kid that i was um so that was that was neat that was really cool and i'm glad that the teachers recognized that like music was my thing and um and i th i would say like really tried to nurture that as much as possible so i will i'll give them that credit there and on that note goodbye clear lake middle school is this a middle school anymore the the sign says brevard adult and community education is this not even a middle school anymore I don't think it is. So I'm not going to lie, I, 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 I'm not 100% sure how to process that. Clear Lake Education Center, it's, it's not even a middle school anymore. It's, it's an adult education center. So no more kids. No more kids running around this campus anymore. It's not a middle school. Huh, well I wonder where the kids go to middle school around here then. That is weird. Right in there is where the uh, kid drop off and pick up was. And then the buses would pull up in here, which was a whole trauma in and of itself for me. Yeah, that's that's pretty crazy. Well, things change, that's, that's life for you. Anyway. We're gonna head to, uh, we're gonna head to my home now. I'm gonna show you where I used to live.
distance away, you're now ha heading down the road into what is called Canaveral Groves, which is uh, the neighborhood that I lived in. There's actually multiple ways to get back into the neighborhood here. We're going in kind of a back way, which is a way that I went probably more often than not. Um, we're actually passing the uh, good old solid waste disposal uh, area as well. Lived right, right next to the dump, which is, uh, well, yeah. Anyway, um, yeah, this, this way is, the, this back way um, is more often than not the way that I would get to my home because it's a lot simpler to get back here, um, like from Disney, from Kissimmee, from Orlando, um, and also from where my high school and, you know, schools were and, and stuff like that. The way, the other way, like the front, I always consider that the front way and this the back way. The front way is, uh, it's always a little bit more congested. It's a little bit more out of the way to get in from over there, more traffic-y. Um, so this is cool. I haven't been back this way in a really long time. I actually pulled off the side of the road because I don't, I, I gotta admit, I don't remember the sign ever being here. But here we go. Welcome to Canaveral Groves, surrounded by these lovely snake plants here. Four-way stop here, Citrus and Pine Street. If you go down that way is the uh, other entrance to this, uh, this neighborhood. So there you go. I think there's only two entrances. I could be wrong. I don't remember. And here we are. Fan Palm Avenue. This is where, this is the street that I lived off of. I'm gonna turn right. So beyond this brush here, this is where I used to live. I'm gonna do a drive-by really quick. That house back in there. That was my house. So funny story, when I took Jay back here the first time to show him where I lived, <laughs> I couldn't remember which house was mine because so much of like the brush and shrubbery around the front there has has changed so much so I couldn't even tell which house was mine and I thought it had been bulldozed I thought it was gone like I, that's how much I couldn't tell and I started bawling I started absolutely sobbing uh, because I thought that it was just that it was gone and my childhood home was gone and Jay can attest to that I was like inconsolable inconsolable um and then i realized wait no hold on a second it's still here it just looks a little it just looks slightly different uh so i'm an idiot but um that's how much i i realized and i actually kind of needed that moment to realize how much this place meant to me um so many amazing good memories here in this home with my family you know my whole family my mom my stepdad and my brother inside of this home my family and um, all of our pets and all of our memories and all of our things our memorabilia you know our Disney stuff our photos all of that like that I wouldn't trade for a single darn thing in the world I just uh, I loved this place it's so hard to see but there it is right in there yeah, I don't want to stray too much on it because obviously somebody else is living in there and I don't want it to be weird <laughs> and I'm just filming this house. <laughs> uh, but there you go. And basically the reason that we don't live there anymore <laughs> is because my parents uh, live full time in an RV now. Uh, so like 2014 is when they sold the home and um, then they lived in an apartment in Melbourne for like a year or so until they got their their RV that they're in now. So yeah, but we yeah, so we lived in that house for a really, really, really long time. Don't mind me just uh, turning around here as we awkwardly drive past one more time. So I will always love this place. I'll always love this house. I can't stress enough, so many good memories. Um, and I'm just really happy to be able to, to share this with you all. I'm sorry that I can't give you like a really clear, good view of the house. 
Um, I have some photos that I've been putting on the screen now, hopefully at this point, of what it looks like. They also built a fence around the house that was definitely not there before, which is good. You got, they, they have more privacy now. So, goodbye house, I love you. Thanks for being amazing. 5205 Fan Palm Avenue, Cocoa, Florida. 321 something something I don't remember anymore. Because it's been a long time. Almost 10 years. Can't believe it. Alright, let's move on. Let's move on with the day. And we have made it to Cocoa Beach. Specifically, Kelsey's Pizza Pasta Kitchen. Kelsey's is actually a pizza place that my family and I went to all the time when we lived here. Not this one specifically, there's closer ones to where we uh, were, where our house was, but it's so, basically it's a chain is what I'm trying to say, but it's super, super good. And I actually ate here uh, last time, last year, when I was here with Tampa J and we were in this area and we, Tampa J really enjoyed it. Didn't you, Tampa J? <gasps> I was like, we gotta go to Kelsey's when we come here. Yes. We are reunited back with Hello, Tampa J. You wanna tell them what you did today? I went to a little museum. Actually, I thought it was gonna be a little, and it actually, I was gonna do two or three things in my video, and it actually took up the whole vlog. The Wizard of Oz Museum. Uh, it's a very immersive experience, and it has actually in it a lot of history, not just the movie, but mostly the novel. Plus some uh, Judy Garland's dress. One of the many dresses she wore in the movie is inside, so. That's awesome. That's what I did while you were going down memory lane, which I've already been there with you before. And yes. uh, so that was the whole plan. We kind of just split up and now yeah. we're back having pizza. I was just saying that Kelsey's is such a unique type of pizza. Like it's not quite New York, it's not Detroit, it's not Chicago, it's not any of that. It's just its own unique thing. We are excited. And I do apologize for doing this at the very end of the video, but uh, hey, at least I remembered. Thank you so much, John and Melinda, for this video's coffee. I sure do appreciate you both. Cheers. I hope you enjoy this one. All right, well, we ate all the food and now- So full. The video is over. We are done. We're gonna head back on over to Tampa. Thank you all so much for watching. I sure do appreciate it as I always do. Um, this one, I guess I always say this, it means a lot, it means a lot to me. Uh, I'm so happy that I can share these memories with you all, especially this particular time of my life. Um, while again, you know, high school, middle school, does anybody really have fun during that time? Did you enjoy high school and middle school, Tampa J? You know what? That is a loaded question. Exactly. Yeah. No, of course not. Nobody does. <laughs> so, it, you yeah. know, it, it is what it is, but the thing that makes me so incredibly happy about this time in my life is, uh, is my family. And um, now it's a Chris the Girl vlog. No, I was telling him earlier, it's not a Chris the Girl vlog because I didn't cry. I actually asked you, I was like, you was it a Chris the Girl yeah, vlog? Yeah, and I was like, no, no. Like, nah, I didn't cry. <laughs> I got on my crying out when we went, when I showed you all these places earlier. Yeah. But um, it's because of my family, and um, I'm very lucky to have the family that I have, uh, to have such an awesome childhood, uh, awesome parents, an awesome brother, um, because I can look back on all of this so incredibly fondly with so much nostalgia and happiness and almost even a little bit of envy. In fact, I kind of feel like it's weird because I kind of feel like I should be going home now. Like we should be going back to my cocoa house now. Right. Like that's, that's how I feel right now, but there's no going back there. So I don't know. Um, so it's tough. You know, it's those moments when you go back to places and all, the, all that stuff comes back and it really truly makes you appreciate not necessarily all the all the good things and bad things together, but just just what happened and how it where it brought you and what who it made you and it just all hits very hard. It's yeah. Very, it's very emotional. Yeah. And so I can understand. 
and we're yeah. we're lucky to be in these positions i guess depending on how you look at it lucky that uh we can go back and uh check out our our childhood locations anyway <laughs> we've done a lot of, we've done a lot of talking today so i'll i'll go ahead and wrap it up here i really really appreciate you all watching thank you so much have so much left to go in this series of where I have lived. If, as I've said many times before, there's a lot of places that I've lived. So this is just going to be an ongoing series. And I didn't even cover everything that I wanted to today too. So we will be back in this area for sure as well. Make sure you check out Tampa J's video. He had oh, his thanks. camera here too. He didn't film. He was, he was doing his own thing. We were doing our own thing today. So make sure you check out that thanks, video. Man. The museum sounds awesome, and I can't wait to watch your video. It sounds really cool. Um, and then, yeah, got a lot more adventures and stuff coming up. So many big plans, big things happening, both on camera and off camera, and just really excited about it all. So I appreciate you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Um, as you would say, if you are new here, Go ahead and subscribe if you like to. Give it a thumbs up. We do a lot of stuff on the channel, and I sure do appreciate it. We're getting close to 10,000, and uh, well, we're getting close to 10,000, so it's yay. amazing. <laughs> all right, thanks all for watching. We'll see you really soon. Bye, bye, everybody. Bye, everyone. Goodbye. We got two teas to go. We sure do. Which that one's mine? Yours. Okay. I drank most of mine already. All right. Bye, bye. <laughs>